The fighting continues in Eastern Europe. Joining us now with the very latest from the Irpin suburb of Kyiv is Newsmax contributor, senior correspondent John Huddy. John, good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, as you were mentioning, there is concern on the ground here in Ukraine that Russian forces in withdrawing have basically pulled back to re refuel, resupply, regroup, and then possibly, and this remains to be seen, launch another offensive in the coming days. But uh, again, that's not confirmed, but there, there is obviously concern about that happening. There is an eerie calm right now. Uh, we haven't heard much. We heard what sounded like small arms fire. We're just, by the way, we're just outside, just south of Irpin. This is uh, one of the suburbs outside of Kiev. So we're about maybe 10 miles outside the center of Kiev, and I'm in one of the trenches, as you can tell, that's been dug in by Ukrainian forces. This was the site of a lot of intense fighting up until right around a week ago when Ukrainian armed forces retook most of this city from those Russian forces, and I'm going to take a walk here as I talk. Um, so earlier, we were actually a little bit further northwest in an area called Stoyanka, where we saw a lot of destruction. We saw Russian uh, a tank that was really blown up, the turret blown, you know, blown right to the side of it. Uh, that happened right next to a gas station. And then the intersection that we were at, along with other media and also Ukrainian troops, uh, a lot of devastation, a lot of destruction there. It was really the, the site, really, of the front lines in the battle that's been going on here. Um, it was quite quiet while we were there. We were there for about an hour and a half until things really heated up, there was incoming fire. Now, I'm not sure if it was a Russian jet that came in and bombed the location or if it was an incoming rocket, but it landed probably about 500 meters from our location. And my crew, along with other the others that were there, we all scrambled basically to take cover. And then when we jumped in our vehicle and, and hightailed it out of there and ended up coming to this location. So for now, it, it is quiet. But as I said at the top, and as you were talking about uh, before the break, there is concern about Russian troops possibly regrouping, refueling, and launching another offensive, or possibly hooking up with troops uh, in the eastern part, in the Donbass region, or linking up with Russian forces in the south, where fighting also remains very intense uh, at this point. Uh, that said, there were reports earlier uh, that came out about two possible Ukrainian attack helicopters that launch an attack on a site, Belgorod, which is a city just east east of the Ukrainian border in Russia. But that information, we're waiting for official confirmation from the Ukrainian armed forces. But for now, we are here in Irpin. Uh, people, journalists are being allowed into the parts of the city that were under Russian control. So whether another offensive is launched, again, that's all the big question here. But for now, it remains quiet. John, just back to you. Uh, great report. Uh, about 10 seconds left. Are, are we looking at, at, you know, that trench is substantial. You think back to World War I, trench warfare, yeah. it would take a month to move 10 feet. Are, are we looking at that again? As far as what? The, the trenches well, that have just been to, dug you in know, here? The, to dig something like that out takes a whole lot of time. You're only going to do that if you plan on using it. Is that yeah. where we are with this war? A stalemate where, where we it's are embedded possible. in trenches? And, and, and it's very possible. I, I, I don't want to speculate too much about that. But like I said, this is one of the many trenches. And... Just to the side of us, and I have to be very careful because showing sure. the military checkpoints here is a, is a big no-no. So we, right. don't want to, we don't want to do anything that's contrary to what we've been asked not to do. But uh, there are many, many checkpoints. And I can tell you this. I know we have to go. Yeah. But I, I arrived in Kiev yesterday. I, I flew into Warsaw. There was a tremendous amount of NATO forces on the ground outside the airport uh, just, just near the Ukrainian border. I saw Patriot missile batteries. I saw a lot of armored personnel carriers. That was pretty significant. And Got then it. crossing into Ukraine, there was substantial checkpoints. I was in Lviv the first night. But then as we got closer to Kiev, you really saw the intensity of these checkpoints. Wow. And now as we're really on this front line, the trenches and, and the military and the troops that remain on the ground. As I said, it's quiet. But what it sounds like is that there was incoming fire from Russian forces okay. as their troops were withdrawing, basically to provide that cover fire. Whether that changes and it gets back in a couple of days to another large offensive and, and you know, intense fighting again, that's the big question. It, it, it remains to be seen. So we'll be on the ground. We'll, we'll you know, of course, keep you up to, up to speed with any updates. John Huddy, thanks so much for the uh, report. Stay safe out there. We appreciate it. Um, you don't think seven, eight-foot trenches are going to be dug in 2022? 
too, but that's where we are uh, in parts of Ukraine. John Huddy, we'll see you again. Thank you. President Zelensky addressing his people and the rest of the world overnight in English. Take a listen. This is the moment. It's the turning point when it's necessary to talk only about the essentials. But we also see that at the same time, Russia is amassing forces for new attacks in the Donbas, and we are getting ready for this. We don't believe anyone, and in any flowery words. And thus, let's bring in former press secretary to President Zelensky, Iulia Mendel. Welcome back to Wake Up America. Uh, hi, thank you for having me. Uh, Yulia, first of all, how, how are you doing? How is your family? Oh, thank you. Um, actually, almost all of my, of my family is suffering because of uh, Russian invasion. First of all, my family is situated in the occupied region of Kherson, which is bordering the peninsula Crimea that Russia annexed uh, eight years ago. Uh, Russians are doing terrible things there. First of all, there are a lot of uh, uh, fighting there. Uh, my parents and my relatives, they are hiding in bomb shelters all the time. But also they are stealing from the shops, from the houses. They are uh, threatening people. If people are going out to protest, they shoot the people. Uh, it's uh, uh, a humanitarian crisis there. Uh, there is no food enough. There are huge lines there. Wow. And of course, everybody is frightened a lot. And I'm afraid for my family very much because you never know what to expect yeah. you know there are tanks there they are saying near the uh, windows that uh, they shoot the schools they shoot the residential houses and they say that they came to save people and all the people are asking from whom from what are you saving us right. why don't you leave and they just don't care just mm -hmm. very wild behavior. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, uh, President Zelensky, he addressed many nations. Yesterday, Australian lawmakers to discuss Russia's latest advancements. He's asking for more sanctions and military aid, uh, including armored vehicles to help his army fight. What do you make of, of his plea for help? Well, uh, uh, these uh, um, requests are very logical. First of all, if you have weapons, they uh, are gonna uh, run out sometimes because you use the weapons to defend your countries. So it's not enough weaponry for Ukraine definitely to make an air defense. Russia has a lot of missiles and a lot of rockets. And uh, she turned, uh, Russia turned our uh, sky into the hell, which is killing thousands and thousands of Ukrainians. So we can run out of weaponry uh, every other day. And that's why we definitely need more and more weapons. And we're very grateful to all the NATO countries. We've heard that yeah. yes, Stoltenberg, the head of NATO, told that, you know, we uh, are going to get as much as it's needed. But the second thing is Russia quite a rich country, you know, because of gas and oil. And uh, even with all the sanctions that exist, right now, Russia still can really stay uh, relatively economically healthy for a long time, mm. up to a year by some expertise. Wow. So uh, this cannot stop Russia for months and months of killing Ukrainians, right? And oil and gas energy embargo is really very crucial in these uh, terms. That's why mm. We are really looking forward to tougher sanctions so that Russia understands its need to stop mass murdering of another country. This yeah. is the massive thing. This yeah. is a very yeah. clear request. Yeah, well, thank you so much uh, for joining us um, and keeping us posted. We, we, we hope that you and your family stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For Thanks, Julia. Okay. We'll see you again. All right. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.